Welcome viewers to the third segment of the first lecture for the online series of lectures for the course of Algebraic Topology 2. In the previous segment, we stated the theorem concerning the simplicial homology groups of, of two torus. We'll begin this segment with, with a theorem that spells out the, the first and the second homology groups of a very important compact surface called Klein bottle. Let me state this theorem first and then I'll prove it. Theorem 2 let S denote the complex represented again it's represented by a label labeled rectangle by the labeled rectangle of the following figure which we call figure 7 figure 7 its underlying space is called the Klein box named after the famous mathematician Felix Klein. The Klein bottle. Okay. Then um, let me uh, let me write out the the first and the second homology groups. First, H1 of S, S is the, you know, the complex uh, represented by a label rectangle that we are going to introduce very soon. And uh, the first homology group of that complex is isomorphic to uh, Z direct sum Z over 2. Okay. And one immediately sees that it, it's not a free abelian group anymore, um, like we had in the case of two torus. It has a torsion part here, and uh, the the second homology group of of this complex is zero, which means that it's it's trivial. The torsion element. element of H1 of S, this guy, is represented by the chain Z1, we'll see what Z1 is in, in a while, and a generator of the group H1 of S modular torsion. Okay, so if you mod out the torsion, uh, torsion part from the first homology group, what you get is free abelian. Okay, and that is represented, that free abelian part is represented by. by W1 where W1 is equal to um, this this linear combination of elementary one chains AB plus BC plus CA and Z1 is given by AD plus DE plus E A. Okay. So let me mm, draw the figure now. Okay, and let me draw it here. Then uh, I'll keep the figure intact until the end of the proof. Okay. Um, 
So let me first draw the complex. Um, S right so before the complex S I uh, okay so so uh, here is the rectangle labeled rectangle that we mentioned here in the theorem This is L. As before, we subdivide the top edge into three equal parts, and uh, we subdivide the width of the rectangle in three equal parts. Along the top edge, we have these label vertices A, B, C, A, and along the left edge, we have the vertices A, D, E, A. On the right edge, we have A, E, D, A. All right, which means that the the left edge and the right edge uh, need to be identified with a twist, and the bottom edge is labeled as A, B. C A so that uh, the bottom edge and the top edge can be identified without any twist okay and now uh, if we glue the edges according to the labeling prescribed in the label the rectangle L then we get uh, a topological space under the the topology that we discussed in the in the uh, first part of this course of algebraic topology uh, given by the following figure okay so we so under the identification of uh, uh, these these vertices along the top edge and the bottom edge gives us a cylinder okay so let me draw that cylinder first uh, by fattening up the bottom uh, bottom part of the uh, cylinder a bit, something like this, right? We get a cylinder like this. Now we are going to stretch this this circle, you know, this end of the cylinder further and rotate it down. In the following way. So I'm going to extend this part and rotate it down. and make it go through itself this way right so let me let me do a bit modification here so this is the the bottom end of the cylinder and this is the top end 
that is going to be bent to go through itself this way right right so now you see that uh, so why is that happening it's it's happening because of this non trivial twist that we have to uh, you know uh, that we have to have uh, because of this uh, uh, twisted identification right and um, uh, so once we identify this a with this a we we see that the the a goes between e and d right this uh, label vertex a goes between e and d and that what i mean is that this this circle a c b a it's a circle right along the top edge or equivalent along the bottom edge it's a circle and that circle is precisely in between these two, you know, uh, two edges. So let me draw that circle. This goes right between these two, two ends. And once it goes through the through the uh, through the surface it becomes a dotted line okay so whenever we introduce a dot line it means that it's inside not there, there is no inside but you know it, it goes it goes through the surface okay this way so it follows this orientation okay and this is the orientation so let me let me call this top edge k it's the top edge of l and this is the this we denote by r which is the left edge of L, left edge of L, okay. So now this circle is going to be G of mod of R, mod of R, okay. It's a um, so R is the left edge and this circle is G of mod of K where G is the gluing map. Okay. So this is the top edge, right? But so uh, you know what? So first we we identify this um, well, 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 right. First we identify this top edge with the bottom edge right and then we identify the left edge with the right edge with a twist to get this structure and then in inside this structure the uh, this top edge or equivalently the bottom edge is going to be a circle and that circle is denoted by g of mod k all right and once the gluing map is 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 acted up in this uh, labeled rectangle L, we get 
uh, this uh, this circle as well which is g of mod r okay good uh, this is the figure and you know um, w1 is the one chain given by the uh, the combination the linear combination of these elementary one chains um, the one chain a comma b um, takes the value one on this one simplex a comma b and b comma c you know uh, and c comma a uh, are similarly defined they are also elementary one chains similarly for z1 one sees that a comma d is a, an elementary one chain so are these two elementary one chains and you take the linear combination of these elementary one chains to uh, to form another one chain called z1 okay and the theorem states that the the one chain uh, uh, z1 represents the torsion element of the first homology group of, of the Klein bottle and um, once you mod out the torsion part from the first homology group you get a free abelian group and that is going to be generated by the one chain w1 okay good all right so now i'm going to uh, erase this top part of the uh, statement of the theorem and then prove it okay i'm going to keep the figure intact proof okay i can go further above i i guess proof okay so let g from mod L to mod S be the pasting map pasting map okay um, mod L is is the is the underlying space of the labeled rectangle L and mod S is the underlying space of the of the complex S Okay, this is the complex S and mod S is called the Klein bottle, the underlying space of the complex S. Okay. Well, here I should have had this two. Okay, so this means that this this top the top end of the cylinder is rotated to go through itself and join the bottom end so that the respective orientations match with each other. Okay, so in general, you know, when when you were having this cylinder, okay, they are oppositely orientated oriented because of the labeling right you see that one is counterclockwise and another one other one is clockwise but when it goes through itself the orientation changes and the orientations of both these ends match once it goes through itself and then we do the identification this way to get this structure whose underlying space is the Klein bottle is called Klein bottle okay so um, G is the pasting map and as before we let g of of mod of boundary of l and we denote that thing as a which in this case again uh, is is wedge of two circles you see that this circle and this circle they meet each other here at this point right and and hence it's it's a wedge of two circles this is as before the wedge of two circles ok 
okay that's one thing now we have to orient the two simplices of L as before counterclockwise okay so orient each of these two simplices counterclockwise So we orient the, all the two simplices of the label rectangle L, L counterclockwise. Okay, so let me write it here. Orient the two simplices of L counterclockwise. Okay. Let let gamma be equal to sum of all this oriented to simplices okay orient the one simplices of l arbitrarily orient the one simplices of l arbitrarily Okay, here again, uh, result 1 and 2 of lemma 1 hold since the orientations of all the two simplices are preserved under the gluing map. Okay, exactly for the same reason that we had for the two torus case. Okay. Um, So uh, let me write it here, here, 1 and 2 of theorem 1 or lemma 1, theorem 1 whole as none of the prescribed clockwise orientation, prescribed uh, counterclockwise orientation, I'm sorry, counterclockwise orientation of sigma i or the arbitrarily chosen orientations we say that we, we can choose the orientations of the one simplices arbitrarily and those arbitrarily chosen orientations orientations of the one simplices one simplices of L are none of them are affected affected by the pasting map G by the pasting map G acting along the boundary along the boundary BD L okay all right so now again in this case as well a is equal to the wedge of two circles which means that we can um, denote each of the circles in this wedge as uh, the boundary of, 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 of a two simplex right so that uh, 
um, as we had for the case of torus, we, we are going to have this complex as the picture of, as, as the diagram of A, right? A, B, C. and um, ADE, right? right? This one holds. And and since this, this remains the picture of uh, A, uh, three of Three of theorem one also holds. Okay, what was three? The the third result that we used to prove theorem one was that if C is a one cycle of the underlying complex carried by this wage of two circles, then C is of the form NW1 plus MZ1. Okay, where N M M are two integers. This result actually follows from this figure. We have seen it, right? We have proved this result. So this this third result from theorem one also follows for the case of Klein bottle, right? Since A is the wage of two circles in this case as well, right? Okay, so that was one thing. One checks explicitly in this case so let me erase this part again. One, one checks explicitly in this case that a, a delta two gamma gamma is the sum of all the all the two. Um, oriented to synthesis or you, if you want to call it the oriented you know um, uh, the, the elementary two chains corresponding to all the oriented to synthesis oriented counterclockwise right so delta 2 gamma is equal to 2z1 one can check so I'll show you a, a one instance okay uh, for instance Um, let me call this guy, this guy sigma 1, okay, this elementary 2 chain corresponding to this oriented to simplex, sigma 1, okay, and this guy sigma 0, right. Uh, we call this sigma 2 and uh, we call this sigma 4. So, uh, for instance, we are taking sigma 1, and sigma 1 is, is, is the 2 chain corresponding to this orient elementary 2 chain corresponding to mm, this oriented 2 simplex. And I, take, I apply the boundary operator on this elementary 2 chain to obtain the following. It's going to be B comma A. So let me call this vertex by F, this vertex by F, and this vertex by H. Okay, since I am going to compute it explicitly, so this is going to be P, B comma A, um, and then A comma F, and then F comma B. 
and delta 2 sigma 2 is well this one is sigma 2 this this elementary 2 chain corresponding to this oriented 2 simplex is is sigma 2 so delta 2 sigma 2 is going to be um, uh, a comma b which is minus b comma a and then plus b comma h and then plus h comma a right so this is our equation number 13 from 13 it is immediate that from 13 when we sum these two these two um, one chains up we see that in this uh, sum there is no contribution of the of the elementary one chain a comma b it's immediate that a comma b does not appear in delta 2 gamma okay where gamma is the sum of all the elementary two chains corresponding to the oriented two simplices sigma i's okay so del uh, so uh, there is no contribution of this uh, elementary one chain in del 2 gamma it's immediate because they cancel out here one can similarly one can similarly verify that b comma c and c comma a do not appear don't appear either in the expression of expression of this one chain delta to gamma so uh, for b comma c you have to take this simplex and this simplex for c comma a you have to take this simplex and this simplex okay and do the same thing that that you did here in equation number 13 to arrive at the fact that uh, that neither b comma c nor c comma a appear in the expression of the one chain del to gamma okay okay so um, one can um, also verify as in the uh, as in the case of two torus uh, in, in the proof of theorem one that del to gamma this guy del to gamma vanishes on each of the one simplices not belong to not belonging to to, to the boundary of L, meaning that these one simplices. Okay, so you can choose the orientations arbitrarily as stated before. And so they have no contribution in del to gamma. One can similarly check. Okay, so you have a, you have to choose a, appropriate two simplices for, for 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 seeing this. Okay, and one can do that easily. okay now um, but we did not so we have seen that delta 2 gamma vanishes on on each of the one simplices that that does not belong to the boundary of L this is the boundary of L okay and one also checked that uh, one also checks that uh, delta 2 gamma vanishes on each of this one simplices a b b c and c a now the, the the this edge is left at this edge and this edge 
okay so let me do that computation now um, coming to the case of the one chains one chain Z1 okay. one checks that Delta 2 Sigma 3 okay well, which one is Sigma 3 Okay, so this is not sigma zero. This is sigma three. I I wrote it as sigma zero before. This has to be sigma three actually. And this has to be sigma four. So um this is F and then I'm going to call it K, this vertex. K. Okay. So delta 2 sigma 3, this one chain, is going to be equal to the one chain, elementary one chain, A comma D, plus um, D comma F, plus F comma A, right? And uh, delta 2 sigma 4, on the other hand, the so I'm considering the uh, two chain corresponding to this oriented to simplex sigma four and apply the boundary operator on that elementary two chain to have the following one chain which is a uh, sum of uh, these elementary one chains um, um, a comma d a comma D plus D comma K and plus K comma C. No, A comma D, sorry, no, no, no K comma C. A comma D, D comma K and K comma A. This is uh, 14. So from this expression, it's immediate that a comma d appears with 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 the coefficient two plus two in the expression of delta two gamma. So when we write delta two uh, delta two gamma, so there 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 will be expressions of delta two sigma three and delta two sigma four appearing there, okay, and that those are the two cases only where a comma d will appear. And and this way one sees that a comma d appears in the expression of delta two gamma with with coefficient plus two here a comma d appears with coefficient plus two. Okay, one can similarly verify that the elementary one chains similarly verify that the elementary one chains one chains D comma E and E comma A both appear with with coefficients coefficients plus two in the expression of in the expression here in the expression of delta gamma. Okay. All right. And this way, one one verifies that delta two gamma is equal to two times z one, right? 
that is one finds that it's two times a comma d plus d comma e plus e comma a which is the same as two times z one okay all right this is equation number 15 so gathering all these results together one computes the homology groups of the Klein bottle now okay let me do the computation so we have all four results in the case of Klein bottle one and two stay the same as in the theorem one and and the third result also holds here because a is the same as in the case of two torus meaning that a is the weight sum of two circles so 3 also holds 4 is modified del 2 gamma is no longer 0 del 2 gamma in this case is 2 times that 1 okay all right let c be, be a one cycle on the complex S this is the complex S on the complex S since both the results 1 and 3 hold since both the results 1 and 3 hold in the present context context one concludes that c is equal to n w1 plus m z1 for some n and m in the set of integers right and this c is of course carried by the boundary a which is the well it's it's carried by the boundary of l which under the action of the gluing map becomes the wage of two circles this is carried by the wedge of two circles well depicted here okay or here okay good Now, if the one cycle C also bounds, if the one cycle C also bounds, then C is equal to del 2D for some 2 chain D on S, right? But we know from our previous discussions that uh, the second result of theorem one holds in 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 the present context as well. Okay, and that tells us that such a two chain D must be a multiple of gamma. Right, D has to be. Well, um, since uh, but in 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 order to in order to be able to apply uh, result two, we need to ensure that this guy is carried by the wedge of two circles, which is the case actually. Why? Because C is carried by 
by a that is the wedge of the two circles and hence del 2 d is also carried by a and then we are all good to apply the second result of theorem 1 or in this case um, so since del 2 d is carried by a we see that d is a multiple of gamma right d is equal to p times gamma for some p in the set of integers hence del 2 d is equal to del 2 p gamma which means this is p del 2 gamma and we have seen earlier that our fault our result fourth result in the in the present context is del 2 gamma is equal to 2z1 right which means that this is 2pz1 this is our equation number 16 okay good so we have just seen that um, C is equal to so one cycle on S C is equal to NW1 plus MZ1 where N and M are integers and if C also bounds if C also bounds then C is equal to del 2D which is equal to 2PZ1 which is our equation number 16 right so thus we see that the one cycle C equal to NW1 plus MZ1 bounds if and only if N is 0, this N is 0, and this M is an even multiple of Z1. In other words, it's this m is even. Well, when so if n is zero and m is even, we say that this one cycle c bounds, right? So if n is equal to zero and m is even, okay. So if we have a one cycle, n and m can be any integers. But if you want this one cycle to, to bound as well, then n has to be zero and m has to be even. All right. A generic element of one boundary on the complex S is therefore of the form zero comma two p. Is an ordered pair because we want the the this this integer to be this this n to be zero and we want the the later so th we want the latter um, you know um, coordinate to be even which we write 2p with p belonging to the set of integers Hence, um, the first homology group of the complex S, which is the is the is a group of one cycles modded out by the group of one boundaries, contains equivalence classes because it's a quotient group so it's 
it's is is the is the is the space of cosets right contains equivalence classes of ordered pairs ordered pairs of integers under the following equivalence relations equivalence relation right uh, all right so we are going to identify two ordered pairs if they obey the following equivalence relations so for given m comma n m prime comma n prime belonging to the direct sum of these two copies of z and we would say that m comma n is equivalent to m prime comma n prime if and only if only if m is equal to m prime okay in other words m minus m prime is equal to zero and n minus n prime is equal to 2p and n minus n prime is equal to 2p for some p in the set of integers okay in other words we identify the zero element of this set of equivalence classes as these elements so all such elements belong to the zero class right okay good right so now I don't need this figure I can erase it okay so uh, for example I'm going to give you a few uh, few examples so under the aforementioned equivalence relation for example 1 comma 3 is identified with 1 comma 11 right because 1 is equal to 1 and 3 minus 11 is an even number okay and this is also equivalent to 1 comma 13 and this is also equivalent to 1 comma 101 etc of course 2 comma 2 is equivalent to 2 comma 4 is equivalent to 2 comma 6 is equivalent to 2 comma 14 and keeps going like this is equivalent to 2 comma 102 say so 2 comma any even number is going to belong to this class but one immediately checks the 2 comma 2 is not equivalent to 2 comma 5 because this is even and this is odd and also 2 comma 3 is not equivalent to 1 comma 5 although this is odd and this is odd but they are not the same the first coordinate the first coordinates are not the same and hence they are not they don't belong to the same class etc good so one therefore concludes that one this way concludes that the first homology group of the complex s whose underlying space is the Klein bottle is is isomorphic to z direct sum z over 2 this is the finite group we, we know that it's it is the set of integer modulo 2 set of integers modulo 2 okay here here um, z1 right um, see that uh, 
uh, this this guy are um, these guys are the elements of uh, one boundary right so z1 represents the torsion element torsion element of the first homology group of the complex S while so once you mod it out with the torsion elements what you get is a free part is a free part of the first homology group and that is going to be um, uh, generated by W1 so while W1 generates the infinite it's gonna be infinite cyclic right the free part as we know from the theory of free abelian groups from the uh, first part of this course and uh, that that infinite cyclic group is h1 of s the first homology group of the complex s modded out by the torsion torsion subgroup t1 of s is free abelian free abelian generated by w1 with t1 of s being the torsion subgroup okay good so we are good with the first homology group of the complex s whose underlying space is the klein bottle right let us now compute now compute the second homology group h2 of s let for that purpose let d be a two cycle on the complex s then since it's a two cycle del 2 d is going to be equal to zero since del 2 d is zero on every one simplex that does not belong to the to the weight sum a of two circles okay as we uh, as we have seen in the diagram right uh, under the gluing map okay uh, so since del 2 d is 0 it, it is obvious that del 2 is 0 on every one simplex that does not belong to the way sum of the two circles okay then by result 2 of theorem 1 which according to previous discussion also applies to the complex s uh, d has to be um, okay uh, uh, d has to be equal to p gamma right because del 2 d is trivially carried by a which is the wage of two circles so d has to be a multiple of gamma for some p in the set of integers okay So, uh, well, now the conclusion is that um, since D is equal to P gamma, Y is D
So we have del 2 d is equal to 0, right? Right. So, um, so from this, we, we know that since d is a, uh, d is a 2 cycle, del 2 d is p times del 2 gamma and del 2 gamma is 2 z1 according to our discussion, right? Which is 2 p z1 and this is 0. What does it mean? It implies that p is equal to 0, all right? Or the integer that we are dealing with p here has to be 0, which means that this two cycle is trivial or the two cycle on S is trivial, right? Good. Since the group of two cycles on since the group of two cycles on S um, which we denote by Z2 of S is trivial H2 of S equal to Z2 of S modded out by B2 of S is trivial as well right as well Right, which means that H2 of S is trivial, QED. Okay, all right. So let me summarize what we have found. For the complex S whose underlying space is the Klein bottle, we found that the first homology group is interesting. It's no longer free abelian as in the case of uh, two towers. It's isomorphic to Z direct sum z over 2 okay and the second homology group of this complex is trivial okay all right so uh, we we end the segment here in the next segment we are going to have our last theorem of this lecture which will deal with uh, the homology groups of real projective plane Thank you for attending this third segment.